Hello everybody, if you're seeing this, it must be Sunday. Hey. So today's video, I'm gonna focus all on low hanging fruit. I hope I've been bothered to write it up there. Hi Sven, just a quick disclaimer mate. When you um, do things like that, just make sure that there's actually something in front of you, okay? Thank you mate. Now you're probably saying, what is low hanging fruit other than easily attainable fruit on a tree or somewhere like that? And the reality is, is that that is just a metaphor for what I am referring to in terms of clothing. So, let's go to the whiteboard and I can break a few little things down for you. Okay, so, as I've just wrote and said it, low hanging fruit. But what exactly is low hanging fruit? Now when we refer to low hanging fruit in terms of clothing, we're talking about easily obtainable items. And I guess easily obtainable is quite a subjective term because a high-end expensive item could be easily obtainable to somebody who has lots of money uh, in the same way that somebody who doesn't have lots of money is easily accessible to get cheaper stuff. But I am referring and talking more specifically with those that want to buy to resell. And I'm going to kind of go into a bit more of an analogy to do with higher-end items. So if you're somebody who's interested in higher-end item price and selling, I'm going to explain why it's the same level of profitability, if not worse, than if you buy things at an affordable price. But let me go in to it with some drawings. Now I know that a lot of people out there that want to resell are very focused on certain brands. Stone Island, Stussy, high-end, high designer brands. But let's really break it down and do a hypothetical situation if you were to buy high-end designer items and what prices you could actually genuinely, honestly get them for and to resell. Now before I get into it, please excuse the fact that what I'm wiping it off doesn't really work that well. Um, yeah, until the budget goes up, the uh, wipe is gonna be the dishcloth, all right? Dishcloth, dish, dish, dishcloth, dishcloth. It's gonna be this. Wow, I think I've got spaghetti in my lips, but. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna put the picture right here on the board so that we can see it at the same time whilst I'm working out the calculator of this. I'm gonna use the example of Stone Island sweatshirt. Now say in an ideal situation, and I don't currently know this market in this current moment, but based on what I've experienced, if you've got a Stone Island sweatshirt at wholesale value price, 60 to 75 pounds each, let's say, and you sold individually those at random, and I know that there's a lot of subjectivity, say each of them was a 130 to 150 pounds each, then the percentage profit at the low end we are just working this out. Yes, I've done it the wrong way around. Oh wow. If you were to buy a Stone Island sweatshirt for £60 at wholesale and resell it for between 130 and 150 roughly your percentage profit before taking insertion fees on websites and stuff like that, the return on that would be around about 2 to 2.1 times rate on return. Okay, so a 2x. And if I'm honest, I think you can do better. So let me break things down and show you a bit more. I do want to also just say with my hands up, I've got my I've got my white flag to anybody who gets offended who is actually a Stone Island specific reseller. Please feel free and drop some gems in the comments if you see this and if not, let me tell you about step two. Now my next example is to take things at a smaller price point that you would buy it for a wholesale. So, we're gonna talk about vintage grade A to grade B sweatshirts. If you've got a supplier and there are suppliers out there that do sell them, this is roughly the price that you will be able to buy them for at wholesale. 12 to 15 pounds per sweatshirt with a rough retail flip of 35 to 50, I'll put the markers here, and the percentage profit that you would make from that would be between about 2.9 and 3.3. I am gonna just say for anybody who is a supplier and sees this and goes, yeah, there's a few other things to consider. Most suppliers won't just sell you vintage sweatshirts. However, for a higher price point, you're probably in better luck of finding them. But there's plenty more videos to go, so stay posted. I will tell you some more information about that. Let me just keep it all excited and keep the camera on moved around. So, if I told you that you could buy things at one to three pound per item and make a much higher percentage rate of return, what would you say to me? You'd say, Spencer, probably not gonna be high-end brands, probably not gonna be designer, desired things, probably gonna have faults with them, X, Y, X, Y, Z. And if I'm being honest, all I'm hearing there is excuse one, excuse two, and excuse three. I would say there is a rate of um, effort that you have to put in that changes with um, cheaper items. Anybody could sell a pair of Carhartt jeans, a Stone Island or Stussy sweatshirt, or a Supreme tee, because those brands are already super established in the industry, and people are searching them like hotcakes, hot 
word for hot cakes. Whatever the saying is, people are always searching for them, so you're way more relevant in searches. However, there are items where if you're looking to spend a lot less and make a lot more in the long scheme of things, then these are the sort of items that I would recommend for you. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but basically, the items I'm talking about that are at a lower price point have this to be considered with, okay? The item you might buy might not be as a designer or high-end as you expect. The quality may differ, and it may be less desirable or unbranded stock that you are looking for and finding. Take a seat a second. Yeah, I did just say come and take a seat. I know it's a bit cringe, but seriously, these are the pros of doing something like that. Actually, I need the whiteboard. Why about come come back to the whiteboard? I have no idea why I just sat down like that. Come over it. So, firstly, you're going to be able to see it on the screen right now. Hopefully, basically, reverse engineer. Why am I doing? I look like I'm crouching, crouching tight and hidden spend. I am so sorry. The first video was so formal. Um, it was like Offset will watch me, and now I'm just being a silly sausage. But I am coming with a point and purpose. Okay, so let me get to that. Rather than telling you how much to sell these for, what I'm going to do is tell you how much you would have to sell them for if you wanted the same profit point as you would get with the Stone Island and the uh, vintage sweatshirt. If we want a two to three percent profit margin based on the same thing for this, then we would have to sell the items at two to nine pounds. Let me just show this a little bit better so you can see. So, look, Stone Island, right? 60 to 75 pounds wholesale value. Resell at 130 to 150. Two to 2.16 percent profit. We go to vintage A to B sweatshirts at 12 to 15 pounds, 35 to 50 at the resale value, and 2.9 to 3.3 percent on the profit. Now, if we've got cheap stock at one to three pounds, and the percentage profit we want to aim for is two to three, the same as all these, then we have to sell them for two to nine pounds each. Now, I do hope there's some part of this that is sinking in, and I don't mean like the Titanic. I do mean sinking in in a positive way. I want us. Is that? Can I say that? Does that sound? I don't even know if that's, who that might offend. I know what you're saying. Spend. I have no idea where to get any of this stuff from, mate. Well. Don't worry about that because later on down the line I'm going to give you some tips. But before we start, I know what you lot want to know. You want to know where you're going to get cheap stock from. I know some of you want to know where you get Stone Island from, and I know where you want to get that from. But that all comes later on. Stay posted. Come this way. I actually don't know what I just did then, but anyway, um, seriously, let's talk about cheap stock and some of the options of where you can find that, okay? Let's get to the white. Hold the phone, that might be the sickest diagram I've ever done in my life. Oh my lord. Right guys, for your safety and own what's it, I'm going to basically put this on the screen here. The whiteboard is just going to be for me to do it, so I know what I'm talking about, alright? I've given you four cheap stock options based on the two to three pounds stuff, right? Charity shops. Charity shops are probably one of the first places that I chose when I was going to buy and sell. Um, and back in 2012, the price was very, 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 very cheap. However, there are still some places that you can get some good prices, and it all depends on what you're actually looking for in those charity shops, okay? Car boots. Now, car boots, for those that are in the UK, you already know what it is. It is like Margaret and Peter getting their boot open at 5.30 in the morning in a field somewhere in Mansfield or anywhere random. And they are selling you their own stuff. The reason why this is considered cheap stock is the people at the car boots are not selling it with the intention that they're selling it to uh, somebody who wants to make money out of it. They're just clearing stock. Indoor markets are basically Kind of the same as chari as car boots, sorry, but you do get some independent sellers there. So this has something in common with this. These two are semi-connected, and the common theme is that people that sell at indoor markets normally buy from charity shops behind closed doors. See, look, closed door behind, yeah? And lastly on the list that I have selected so far is eBay. eBay was one of the places that I used to buy stock for to resell. Uh, and back in the day, I used to be able to pick up sweatshirts like Nike for 99p. Seriously, I hit the golden days and now I'm here to give you some golden nuggets of advice. 
These are four methods to start a cheap place to begin, okay? Now, I, I know that I have given you a little bit of advice and you might be thinking, okay, there's a lot to take in from this or there's not enough to take in from the right direction. What are objectives from what I've learned today? The best thing to do if you want to start on a budget is to start cheap. Get creative with how you sell things. Now, over the course of the time, I will be able to make videos showing you how I would sell cheaper stuff, how you can work on your aesthetic, how you can market it on different platforms, and how you can get quick sales on all of those and all of the above. I've been Spencer Lyon, and this is the channel that you need if you want to learn stuff about vintage and secondhand online communities and the markets of everything. So yeah, if also, 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 before I head, like, that's not the door, that's the fire, is it? But before I go, if you want anything in particular, you want to ask me a question about a video that you think I should cover, like how do I do this, how would you recommend this, please drop a comment down below, because then I've got eyes, I've got all four of them, I'll read them and I'll take something from it and maybe integrate inter 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 it, sorry I glitched, integrate it in another video. Okay, big love, take care and I'll see you next Sunday for some more. Yeah.